Today's video is for all of my friends in Canada. Let's face it, your options for menstrual cups and discs are very slim. If you're new here, my name is Kim Rosas and I'm a menstrual cup and disc expert. I have been educating people on this topic for over a decade. On Period Nirvana, you're gonna find a ton of resources about how to use your cup, reviews, and how to pick the right one for you. Same goes for discs. And I know this video is about Canada and for Canadians, but if you happen to be watching and you live in the US, you can find a curated selection of reusable period products on my store, period.shop. If you shop from that store, you're supporting the free educational content I provide here, so thank you. Before we move on, don't forget to subscribe. So this video is hopefully gonna be a quick one because like I said, your options in Canada are pretty slim. Now, I don't have every single product that is available in Canada, and actually I kind of do, but I've lost them. Here's what I was able to find from my stash. This represents almost every single menstrual cup and disc that you can get in Canada. The difference in what's available to Canada versus what's available in US is staggering. This video is a little bit overdue. I really have been wanting to do something for Canadians who are finding it hard to find the right product for them because there are so few options. So what I've been working on lately is a resource on periodnirvana.com. It has a list of every single menstrual cup brand and menstrual disc brand, including charts, that you can get that is Health Canada approved. To get a product in Canada that is a class two medical device like a menstrual cup or a menstrual disc, it must be approved by Health Canada. And I'm not gonna go into every single detail of why it's so different in Canada versus the US, but essentially if you're a menstrual cup or disc brand and you want to sell in Canada, the process is typically lengthier than the process to get the FDA registration you need to sell in the US. Sometimes it could take up to two years based on many of the brands I've talked to. And I don't know how many brands are going to outright say this. It might just not be worth it financially because the difference in population for more work to get Health Canada approval versus the reward is a lot. There are only about 37 million people in Canada compared to 332 million people in the US. When you're a niche brand that's serving very particular needs, something that only works for people with a low cervix or only, you know, caters to one specific need and low cervix is like really the big one here, you are already catering to a smaller percentage of the population in the US. Well, now you're catering to a smaller percentage of the population of a smaller <laughs> marketplace like Canada, but putting in so much extra work and effort, time and money. It's not fair to Canadians, uh, which I totally recognize. And so really that's that's kind of the, the end of the argument, right? It's like, if it doesn't make sense to do the work to get into Canada, the brands aren't gonna do it. There are a couple reasons that you still want as a Canadian to buy the Health Canada approved products. When it comes to bringing a product in over the border from the US, it typically, one is going to triple the cost. It's going to be more. They're going to charge a premium for it. If they're selling it on some sort of marketplace that is willing to ship to Canada, they're going to charge more for it. Two, it's going to probably end up having additional customs fees, surprise custom fees when it gets there. Again, sometimes doubling or tripling the cost. And because it's not approved, you also run the risk of having your product seized in customs if someone happens to decide to investigate your package and there's no recourse for you. That is, the, the risk is on you. Again, I know it's unfortunate that this is what the marketplace looks like for Canadians, but we have had some bright spots in Canada and I feel like in my heart, and it's not just because I know things, but it's also because I do a lot of research, in the next year to two, we're going to see even more options. Now, it's gonna be nothing like what's available in the US. It's always, at least for now, unless Health Canada changes things, going to be a smaller pool of options. But we are seeing some more brands coming in, and these brands are going to meet a few more needs that are not met. But as of now, we're still really low to non-existent on low cervix menstrual cup options in Canada. So now let's talk about the brands that have done the work, that have Health Canada approval. I gotta start with Diva Cup. Diva Cup has essentially owned the Canadian market for 20 years. And for 
basically a decade, you couldn't find anything in Canada that was not a Diva Cup. <laughs> so uh, if you're watching this and you're in Canada and you've used a menstrual cup, I want to say odds are you started with a Diva Cup. Diva Cup does have three size options. They're all pretty much for a high cervix. I know. There's this like running joke that I have with people in the industry, which there is such a thing, that Canadians must have a super high cervix because up until 2021, all of the options that were available in Canada were all really high cervix options. If you had an even an average cervix or an average low cervix, the options were not going to fit you well. So they do have a teen model, they have a teen diameter, they have a size one and a size two, or a model one and a model two. Um, all of these are long. You can trim the stem, and in a lot of cases, and I don't typically recommend this, try flipping it inside out to make it a little shorter to fit better. It's going to be harder to grip to remove, so weigh the pros and cons on that one, but when you're desperate and you need something to fit, it might work for you. But yeah, these are your standard Canadian high cervix options. Now, firmness-wise, they're actually pretty average. I like the firmness of Diva as a starter cup. I rate it as a three on my firmness scale, so it's right in the middle. It's not too soft, it's not too firm. Some people still find it a little firm for them, which is why we'll move on to the next cup. This is the Isle Cup, which is also sold as Life Cup, and it comes in two sizes, A and B. I can only find my size B, but this is a softer version than Diva Cup. It is still <laughs> very long. So it's kind of like a generic version of Diva. It even has the same kind of hollow stem, which is not a favorite feature of the Diva Cup of mine. But yes, if you found the Diva Cup too firm, but otherwise liked it, this is slightly softer. One of the brands that has a lot of money to throw around and got Health Canada approval is Tampax. <laughs> Surprise. Tampax does have a menstrual cup. It's been out for several years. They come in these two sizes. They call it like regular or heavy flow. I don't like sizing cups by flow. Uh, that's how they size it. I like sizing them on size. If you do have a low cervix, this is probably one of your few cup options that is going to accommodate a lower cervix, especially because it has uh, open wider rim. So the cervix has space to dip. And it depends on which size. Certainly the smaller is a shorter cup when you trim off the stem and has that lower body that can work for a low-ish cervix. It's not gonna work for the lowest cervix, but it can work. I do like this cup and I've tried it many years ago. It has a very flared rim, so it looks quite intimidating. You know, you definitely wanna be careful as you remove a cup like this because it's so wide. I like to do the angle method, so it reduces the diameter when removing something this big. The why is that they designed it so that it stays in place against muscle movement, so if you were very active, or if your uh, cup tends to leak while you're sleeping. Also, it has that wide rim that can help with sleep leaks. The Tampax cup is going to go back into place if you sort of push it down while you're physically active and exercising. So there is a reason for this wide rim. I know it looks intimidating, but it is a promising option if you have a lower cervix or you've had leaks with some of the other options in Canada, and it seems to be pretty available in different places in Canada. Salt Cup has recently become available in Canada, so that is their original Salt Cup line, which is what I have here. They're small and they're regular. Also, their Soft line, which is their small and regular size, but this is the softer firmness. So this is a two and a half on my period Nirvana scale, and this is a four on my period Nirvana firmness scale. So these are good for first timers. I like firm cups for first timers, unless you know that you have some sensitivities or are prone to cramps. I would start with a firmer cup because they're easier to get open, and that's just for any brand. I like typically leading people to firmer cups because they're less frustrating, because they're less likely to leak, because they're more likely to open. Softer cups you have to fiddle with to get open. Um, so I do like the original Firmness Salt as a first time starter cup. And you know, I'm gonna bring it back to Diva. It is a shorter bodied cup when you trim the stem than the largest Diva. And the same goes for the small compared to the size one or model one Diva. Um, it is shorter. So I feel like Salt is a better first time cup if you don't know your cervix height um, and you're just picking randomly at a store. When you're in Canada, that's I mean, or in the US, if you're looking between Diva and Salt, um, I typically would say Salt because it is going to fit most people's cervix height or the average person. 
and Diva is not. I had issues with Diva being too long for me. Most people do. So this is a better starter cup brand. If you do know that you have a more sensitive sensibility or you've tried other menstrual cups and they were too firm, uh, you do wanna look at the Salt Soft. It is a softer firmness. It's not going to apply that bladder pressure that maybe other cups did or that discomfort. So you can look at that option as well. As I said, I have basically all of the brands in Canada, but some of them I couldn't find. One of the examples is this Liberty Cup, which is also a private label made by the company Clarifarm. Clarifarm technically makes four different sizes, but in Canada, I can only find size one and size two. This is their size two. It is still not like the best for low cervix, and you can look up the dimensions of their size one and size two, but I do like just the general features of it. The brand Intamina's line is all available in Canada, so there are quite a few options, but again, all of their cups are pretty much geared towards people with a high cervix, so this is the Lily Cup. These are nice if you have bladder pressure, they're very sculptural. They don't apply that pressure here at the rim if it doesn't have a protruding rim. They're really soft, they feel very luxurious. This Lily Cup, both sizes are rated a four because the rim is pretty firm. I've always really loved this cup, but it's too long for me by quite a lot. I can't really wear it, even trimming the stem. They have the size A and the size B, so if you have a high cervix and you want something really pretty, you can do that. They also have their compact line, which is this brand. I can't find my size A. This is size B. It folds. Um, I kind of consider this a novelty cup. It's not a first time cup that I would recommend people use. And it's also, again, actually pretty long. <laughs> so it's a long cup. I, I feel ridiculous as I go through all the options because they really are all like high cervix or slightly higher than average cervix options. And it has a pretty firm rim. I rate it as a four. The other Intamina cup option is their uh, teen, is geared towards teens option called Lily Cup One. It has a little ring at the bottom. It is also kind of technically um, collapsible, but it is harder to collapse than their original compact option. So at least it seems like when you insert it, it's not going to want to collapse into itself as much as their Lily Cup Compact can do for some people. I really just don't recommend the Lily Cup Compact for first time users because of that experience um, and because it's a longer cup, unless you just really want to try it. This one's a little bit better as a first time option because of the way it's designed. Um, it is still a four on the firmness of the rim. So you can go to that resource that I'm linking to compare all of the sizes to see if there's something out of the Intamina Lily Cup line that works for you. When I started working on this resource, I was doing a ton of web searches and on the front page was the news that literally four hours ago, as of when I was doing that search, the Flex Cup was approved in Health Canada. It was a press release. So Flex Cup is also really best for people who have a pretty high cervix. <laughs> Surprise, Canadians, everyone, you all have high cervixes. This is what the market is telling you. It is an adjustable stem. So you can shorten the stem on a flex cup, but you can only shorten it to about here, which is still pretty long and you can't trim the stem. It is average firmness. Um, so it is a good starter firmness. It is the only option US, Canada, worldwide, because they have a patent on it that breaks the seal for you when you pull this down. Typically you need to break the seal of your cup by pushing this in. You pull this and it, and it will probably be hard to see because it's black, but it will dent the top rim so that it breaks the seal for you. So it is a great option if you've ever struggled to remove your cup. It's one I recommend for people with accessibility issues. So it's nice that it is available in Canada, but the downside of the Flex Cup in general is that it has that design feature that works for a lot of people who need that assistance, but it doesn't work for people with a lower cervix or even some with a lower average kind of cervix. I'm almost through it. It's, it. I told you it wasn't gonna be super long because there aren't that many options. There's an option from a brand called Get Only or a website called Get Only that sells a private label TPE cup. They sell it as green umbrella. So as far as I can tell in all of my research, this is the only TPE cup option in Canada. It comes in three sizes. I do like the sizing of these because this is your smallest. It's really petite. It's still kind of a long body, but not that bad. Um, and you can trim the stem. This is their size one. 
this is their size two. Because it's TPE, firmness is a little bit different in how it's worn in the body. If you have a silicone allergy and you live in Canada, this is kind of your only option. This is the Ultu Cup brand. This is actually a Casco cup. Casco, as a manufacturer, will let you sort of tweak their cups to be more what you want, the stem or the, the size, like ever so slightly. But they have a mini, the Ultu Mini, and it is good for a shorter cervix because the body is short. This is a size one and this is a size two. The size one and size two are really better for a high cervix. <laughs> so the mini is kind of your best low-ish cervix cup option out of the Ultu line. What we learned by going through all of the options that are currently available in Canada approved by Health Canada is that there are not that many menstrual cup options that work for someone with a low cervix. Now, I'm going to go ahead and remind people watching that there are ways to get cups in Canada, but as I mentioned, they're very expensive. Uh, if you go on amazon.ca and you look for menstrual cups, you're gonna see way more than I talked about, but I can tell you those cups are not Health Canada approved. And I can tell you that because I looked them all up. So all of those like white label, private label brands like Shorty and Pixie Cup and Croing and blah, 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 name cups that are saying they'll ship to Canada, they are not Health Canada approved. So that is at your own risk if you decide to buy any of those brands. Now let's talk about menstrual discs, reusable menstrual discs specifically, that are available to you in Canada. The first option is the Ziggy, the Ziggy Cup. It's a disc, but they call it a cup. Originally, this was approved years ago because they had a one size. Um, and Tamina's whole line is approved um, of reusable period products. So it was great that this was an early option for users in Canada. I personally don't have a lot of luck using the Ziggy um, because it's an oval shape. So it doesn't work as well for me as round and firmer discs, but it is an option. And more recently, they redesigned their product line to be the Ziggy Cup 2. So this is the size B and this is the size A. So they now also offer a smaller version. And if you're in Canada and you have a low cervix, the smaller menstrual discs tend to work better if you have a low cervix, although sometimes the one size and larger discs can also work. But you know, it might be better to start with a smaller option. And this is a smaller option, the size A. If you have a lower cervix, it is also oval. So that is a nice development for people who live in Canada. The Nixit disc. Nixit is made in Canada. It has been available in Canada for a few years. It's a pretty soft menstrual disc, but I like it because it is completely round. Round discs work better for me, but it has a really nice soft basket. It's going to work for people with a lowish up to a high cervix, but if you have a high cervix for any menstrual disc, you just want to be aware that it could be harder to kind of find and reach to remove. Currently, none of the products in Canada, like Hello Disc, which I know like I get yelled at daily because the Hello Disc is not in Canada, I can't do anything about that. So if you're looking for something for a high cervix, um, you have plenty of cup options in Canada. It's just I would be a little bit nervous about using a menstrual disc for a high cervix because they're harder to reach. So average cervix, lowish cervix, even average highish just not super high. Super high means it's gonna be hard to grasp and reach. And finally, this is a super short list, the Diva Disc, which just was made available in Canada as of a few weeks ago. So this is the newest product from Diva. They haven't come out with a new product in a long time. I've reviewed, I've reviewed a lot of the things we've talked about, not all of them. Um, this is my most recent review because it just came out. So this has something different that other discs don't have. It has a leak proof shield. It is an oval disc and I did have some leaks with it that were not minor. Um, but what's nice about this is that it has that removal loop. So that's gonna be easy to remove and dump. So it is smaller overall, it's 68 millimeters length, but it's narrow. Uh, and it is softer than a lot of uh, other menstrual discs, but actually about the same firmness as Nixit. And it's gray, which is nice from a staining perspective. So it's nice that you in Canada can now buy this. Ultimately, if you're watching this and you're in Canada, I just wanted to give you a visual of what is available to you. That situation is likely to change. So this video will hopefully be very outdated and that will, there will be lots more options in the coming years, but um, I, very much daily get almost abuse, <laughs> um, verbal abuse or written text abuse from people who are really upset 
that my store, period.shop, does not ship to Canada. And the reason why is that most of the brands I carry are not Health Canada approved. And the ones that I do carry that are Health Canada approved, it's just better for you as a consumer to buy it from a Canadian retailer because you're going to save so much money on shipping and you're going to save so much money and hassle on uh, customs, potential customs fees, and of course, um, time, like shipping time frames. It would take you less time probably to ship within Canada than from my store, which is in South Carolina, over the border to wherever you live in Canada. And so I as a person cannot go around the rules that exist. I can't just ship all the products that I sell to other countries because it's not just Canada, it's other countries have their own regulatory agencies that are in charge of medical devices and cups for most countries are considered medical devices because they go in your body, they're made of medical grade materials or they need to be, should be, which is part of the regulation, right? Uh, you want it to be safe. And so I can't just willy nilly ship everywhere. And the people who do are risking your money because it might not deliver to you or you know you are paying a premium now that said some people really find it worthwhile to pay that premium they will pay whatever it takes to find what works for them and i understand that frustration i understand that motivation i would say the best roundabout way of getting something in the u.s if you live in canada is to get a friend to buy it and then have them ship it to you directly that's going to probably be your best avenue if you really want something from the US. The other option is a third party mail forwarding service. A lot of Canadians do this cuz uh, the U.S. is so close, but and we have so many things in the marketplace that you don't, not just period products. And so they will pay for a service sometimes like 20, 30 bucks that has a US address and then for that 20, 30 bucks that address will then mail it to your Canadian address. But again, you still run several financial risks and potential loss of product. So that's all at your own risk, but I, I do understand the frustration of not being able to get the product that's going to work for you and make your period better and to potentially help you experience period nirvana. And as an advocate, I get so frustrated at the lack of options in Canada. I do feel like we, there needs to be a happy medium. I feel like the FDA US process is too lenient. We have, um, and I did the math, we have about 200 registered brands. 70% of those brands are private label or white label or generic cups, which are basically the same five cups being sold under all of these different brand names. That is very confusing. Uh, they're all different price points. So it's just a weird marketplace for cups. Uh, and now for discs as well in the US. Now in Canada, things are totally opposite. There are about 15 approved brands, menstrual cups and discs. Um, and a few of them are private label, but not many. So, um, you know, we need somewhere in the middle. We need some competition for Canada. We need some options for Canada for um, low cervix and some of these niche needs that are not being met and are provided by brands that probably don't have the bandwidth or the budget to get Health Canada approval, um, but they're still safe brands. They just are not there yet. And that's really what people say. When I talk to brands about Canada, most of them say, we wanna do it. We really want to do it. We just don't have the means, um, but we want to when we do. And so that is a little glimmer of hope <laughs> if you were in Canada that there are so many brands who want to make their products available to you. They just need to grow. Uh, so they need to sell more items. They need to make more money. Um, have more staff, hire more staff, and then tackle that in the future. Or they're already in the process and they're just not approved. So, oh, wow. I thought this was gonna be a short video, but it is not, <laughs> which is what always happens. That's it. I really just wanted a resource to give people to help them find something in Canada because it's cheaper to find it in Canada. Let's find everything that's available in Canada and show it to you. Check out the link. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. And uh, I have a lot of resources in this vein to help you continue finding what's going to work for you, including the searchable database, thecupfinder.com. You can search by sizes and diameter and length and capacity. And the other option is the sortable chart. I included a chart for cups and chart for discs in my Canadian resource guide. Um, so you can just look at what's available in Canada and what's available um, for discs and cups in Canada on that page. I mean, I am going to try to keep it updated, but... I am one human, so there are probably things that will get approved that don't get immediately added, but I will do my best. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.